Hello. I'm Mr. Mike, and welcome to my video on Pokemon Sword and Shield. I wanted to make a video on this topic for a while now, but for whatever reason, I haven't gotten around to it. However, since we'll be getting new Pokemon related news on the 5th of June, I figured I might as well make this video now. After playing through Sun and Moon for the first time and being somewhat disappointed with them, I had grown a bit pessimistic on the future of Pokemon in general. A lot of the series' long-standing problems had become the worst they've ever been, with precious little being done to fix them. Despite constantly streamlining certain aspects of the games, many equally great features are forgotten and left out, such as the Dex Nav, Pokemon following you around, selectable difficulty modes, the ability to skip tutorials, and a good post-game, among other things. But after watching this reveal, and seeing for myself what these new games are like, have my opinions changed? Did they do anything to assuage my long-standing concerns? Well... The answer is yes... and no. Pokemon Sword and Shield's reveal, begins with a few nice shots of what can be assumed to be the beginning town, and right off the bat it's apparent that this game looks very good visually. The art style is the same as Sun and Moon's, only with more detail. Some people were a bit bummed by it, but I don't mind all that much. We also get a good look at the new protagonists. The male protag looks pretty alright, though I'm not a big fan of the literal toy box on his back. And then we have the female protag, who once again is cute as fuck. The next major thing to note is the fact that you can sneak. Sneaking was introduced in Pokemon Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, and was used in concert with the Dex Nav, one of the best features for catching new Pokemon ever introduced. It hasn't been confirmed to return for this game, but it would be great to see it come back. This scene also confirms that battles will be random encounters like the prior games, instead of lifting the overworld encounters thing from the Let's Go games. As well, it appears that having Pokemon follow you will not be possible in these games, which is a shame since everyone absolutely loved that feature and we're happy to see it return in the Let's Go games. Oh well, maybe next time. The next scene of note is a giant hill with an engraving on it. People have pointed out that this is most likely based on the Cernabus giant. Given that the game's region, called the Gala region, is based on the UK, it's not surprising to see such real-world landmarks being referenced. The real question, of course, is if it has any greater meaning. Does this depict a new legendary Pokemon? Due to its head shape, people have speculated that it could somehow be related to, or even just straight up be, Melton or Melmetal. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. The final shot of this trailer shows the male pro tag walking into what appears to be a football arena. It's been confirmed that these are the gyms in this game, but as to how they function, well, we still don't know. The gameplay trailer then segues into a CG trailer for the new starter Pokemon. The first starter shown off is the fire starter, a cute little rabbit named Scorbunny. The bandage-like patch on his nose seems to be an indication that it will evolve into a fire fighting type, as such patches are a visual steerier type for people who fight a lot. The second starter is the water starter, Sobble. It appears to be based on an axolotl, and it wears a sad and timid face. It initially appears to be invisible while under the water, leading many to speculate it may adopt the ghost typing later in its evolutionary line, which would be pretty dope. The third and final starter is a grass starter, Grookey. It's a tiny green monkey that is seen banging a pile of dirt with a stick, as you do. These three starters look pretty alright, none of them seem particularly awful, but there isn't much that makes them stand out. I'm tentatively going to pick Scorbunny because I love me some fire type Pokemon and its design isn't too bad. And that's basically where it ends. Overall, this reveal has left me cautiously optimistic for these new games. On one hand, I'm liking what I've seen thus far. The visuals are a step up from the previous games and the new starters look alright overall. But on the other hand, I'm still worried that the games will just be more of the same. Of course, at the end of the day, this is just a teaser of things to come. New information on these games will be coming on the 5th of June, so I can only hope that these new games do enough to keep things fresh and improve on the features that previous games introduced. And with that, we're at the end of the video. Thank you for watching.